All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Makakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on how Yahweh is turning in the captivity of the children of Israel. And by him doing this, he's starting to gradually reduce the position of the Edomites. And increase the position of the Israelites, right? And we're, we're seeing the evidence of it. And I was just listening to these brothers. These brothers, man. Doing a lesson about how they'd watched the uh, Civil War movie. And loads of people are doing lessons on how they've watched that movie. And they're going into all the things that take place in that movie. And <clears throat> it sounds like an interesting movie, man. And I'm going to try and see if I can watch that as well. But... um. That that kind of chaotic events is going to be things that are going to humble all of these people that they've been kind of thinking that they are ready for the time to come, man, right? You've got these Edomites out there and they think that they're ready for what's happening. And I'm going to get a scripture quickly because even the elites that in in their mind, some of the, a lot of the destruction that's taking place, they actually have got the destruction take, that's taking place as part of their plans to rule the world, right? But they're going to set things off to a point where even they are not ready, even though they're according to what they think in their mind anyway. But really, it's Yahweh's plan to use them to do this. <coughs> <coughs> but part of their own plans is to destroy the society, right? That's actually part of their plans, man, that they think they can destroy the world and then reset it and make it anew, right? Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12, And I beheld... When he had opened a sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and ev and ev and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. That's talking about, right? When it's talking about the scroll. The, the world, the, um, the heaven departed as a scroll. That's talking about a um, mushroom cloud, right? When you see a mushroom cloud of a nuke and then it opens up, right? And then you see that quick flash, man. And, and in order to see a good example of that, just watch the first, like, maybe 10 minutes of this new TV series that's came out called um, Fallout, man. That first 10 minutes of that show is very horrifying, man. It's extremely horrifying, that first 10 minutes of that show. And it shows exactly how scary <coughs> a nuclear missile going off would be, man. Right? Except in that show, they're not, they don't even go as extreme as it actually is because America's not going to survive nuclear, nuclear missiles hitting it. It's not going to survive that. It's not going to survive. There's not going to be no people that are trying to come back and re recreate what was once there and all that and make a new. That's not going to happen. The whole place is going, man. And the reason why it's going is just because is because of what that place did to the children of Israel. They they stole the land from the children of Israel from the tribe of Gad and different other tribes, Issachar, right? They stole the land from them. Manasseh, they stole the land from them, right? They stole it. And then <coughs> they brought the other kingdom of the Israelites, the southern kingdom of the Israelites over there as well, and forced them to work, man. And it wasn't a mistake that they just randomly got these two groups of people and found these two groups of people because there was other places in the world that they could have tried to put those people in slavery. They wanted to put them in slavery. Because Yahweh had that as part of his plan to punish them for all their wickedness and to make Judah and Israel be punished together in one place, which had never happened for, for the times of all of their sins, really. Because the Assyrians took down the um, northern kingdom and the Babylonians took down the um, southern kingdom and they, the Assyrians took the northern kingdom into captivity. And the Babylonians took the southern kingdom into captivity. And from that point on, they'd been split. Until 
America. And for all you people that want to say, nah, that ain't what it is. Well, you say where it was then. Where is it that Judah and Israel were oppressed together? Don't. It's easy to say what it ain't. It takes more skill to say what it is, though. To have an opinion. To put something out there that people can either believe or deny. Right? Just like when it comes to the MOTB prophecy, Revelation 13 and 16. It's easy to say what it isn't or what you don't think it is. But it's a lot harder to say what you do think it is. <coughs> and then time goes by. And then you end up seeing whether it is that or whether it isn't that. And the Israelites have not really changed from their position of them believing that it is the, the um, micro CHIP. They haven't changed from that thought process, man. You've got some Israelites that don't believe it. But the Israelites have been that have been saying that that's what it is. They haven't changed from that thought process. They haven't changed. But back to this, verse fifteen, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men. So these are people that are getting it in life, man. And the chief captains and the mighty men. These are all all people that would be belonging to the kings of the earth, the rich, the people that have made it, man. Right. And every bondman. These are the servants of those kings. And every man hid themselves in the dens. And in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So even the people that are trying to set this up, even the people that are setting up, you know what, we need to destroy these societies, right? Because the earth's population is way too great, right? We've got the um, Georgia Guidestone things, and we've wrote on there that we want only 500 million people, but we need to... And then somehow that's been destroyed now. And no one ain't really talking about that. But anyway, right. They've they've got it in there, a plan to depopulate the earth. You hear that demon, that demon man, Gates, that Microsoft clown. He's always talking about the earth depopulation and all that. And he always talks about all of these um, V-A-C-C-I-N-E's, right? And when he's talking about these things, he's always talking about depopulation when he's talking about it. Man. Don't people find that that's a bit suspicious? No. Don't they think, you know what, that's a bit strange. That's a bit strange that he's talking about that with these things. And all in, in 2020 to 2022, really, that's when it was really pushed a lot. That's one of the main talking points that it was pushing loads of people took one. Loads of people, man. Loads of you people that think you're so rebellious, right? And you think, man, God can't tell me what to do. God can't tell me not to eat pork. But a man, I don't believe, I don't believe what no man's written in no book. All you people, all you fake tough guys and rebellious people. I don't believe nothing that no man's written in no book. Well, you believed when you was told to take that and stuff it down your veins, didn't you? You didn't really have to, you didn't really find out too much about what was going on with that, did you? You was trying to be the first wave. A lot of you people was trying to be the first wave of the of the testees, man. You was trying to be the first wave. You people was making sure that that mask was double on tight and having it from the moment you step out your house to the moment you get back in the house. That's how some of you people is doing it. So you're not as rebellious as you think you are really, are you? And you do listen to what a man says out of a book. You just don't like the Bible. That's what it really was. But anyway, back on this point here, man. The people that are calling for this kind of thing and calling for the destruction, right? They're the same people that are going to be hiding. So if the people that was hoping for this day on the left-hand side are going to be hiding, what are all these other people going to be doing, man? What all these other and let me get a scripture to prove what I mean man, when I say that man. Let me get a scripture to prove what I'm saying. Right? The, the, there's gonna come up the World War Three, right? Brings the Lord to the earth. World War Three, the ultimate peak point of World War Three is gonna be when all the nations decide to shoot off missiles, and according to prophecy. When you go to Ezekiel 38, it says that um, Gog and Magog, which represents Russia ultimately, that they're going to think an evil thought. So it's really going to be them 
according to when you look at prophecy, it sounded like it's going to be them that are going to be the ones that are like, you know what? We need to go nuclear with this because otherwise it might not work out the best for us. So let's just take it there first. Fuck it. Let's just take it there first, man. And it's going to be Yahweh in their mind to think like that. Yahweh's going to be in their mind, man. You know what? Do it, man. Yahweh's going to have angels around whoever's in charge of that country forcing them. They, they might not even think to, in their mind that they want to do it, but Yahweh's going to have them angels shaking their mind to do exactly what Yahweh wants them to do, man. Do it. The angel's going to be in their ear. You know it's time, right? You know it's time. This is what you've been made for. Do it. That's the kind of thing that's going to be happening, man. And they're going to do it. And then Yahweh's going to get the other people on the other side. You know what they just did, right? All your land's going to be destroyed. Do it. That's what these people like to try and come with anyway, right? They got all these slogans. Just do it. Well, your how is going to make them just do that. But they don't believe that. But the day is going to come where they're going to see the evidence, man. Because your how is turning the captivity of Israel. And part of him turning that captivity of Israel is that all these other nations have to go through this. Because this is the way... How Yahweh wants to weaken their enemies. This World War Three is going to weaken all of the enemies of Israel, man. They're all going to be weakened. They're going to lose the majority of their wealth in that time. They're going to lose the majority of their monuments in that time. They're going to weaken their allies in that time. Right? A lot's going to happen, man. Second of chapter 13 and verse 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. Now, who is he going to deliver that's upon the earth? The Israelites, man. He's going to turn the captivity of Israel again. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Now, it's not going to be to the astonishment of the elect to the nation of Israel because we know, well, I'm not saying that I'm not the elect, man. I ain't going to say that, right? But we know as Israelites that there's certain things that we're expecting to see to where we're like, okay, the day of the Lord's coming closer. So when the MOTB gets made mandatory, right, that means it's very close, right? Things are very close, man. And when you read this a certain chapter in Revelation, right, you see that, man, it's just it's like there's just continual after the MOTB, after it mentions the MOTB in this particular chapter, it's like, man, a next thing happens after that, then a next thing happens after that, then a next thing happens after that, then a next thing, then a next thing, then a next thing, then a next thing, which then ultimately leads to the final thing, right? Verse 31, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, civil war, which is what them brothers are going into in that movie, right? One place against another, which again is civil war, one people against another, which is race wars. And one Rome against another, which is world war. How, how many times has it happened where there's all these things going on at once? Not often. I, I don't really, can't really think of a time where there was civil war in a country and at the same time race wars and at the same time a world war. That's complete chaos, man. In that kind of time, you really ain't got hardly any allies, man. You really ain't got hardly any allies in a time like that. That's a very chaotic and scary environment, man. Which is why the scriptures explain it there. The Lord is like a man that fleed from a lion, fleed from a bear, rested his hand on a wall and a serpent bit him because there ain't really no safety in a time like that, man. And people that think that they're tough, people that think that they're bad, they're going to get the chance to test all of that out. All you money guys, right? You're going from the UK maybe to Miami, you're going from Miami to London and you think that you're just a global traveller, right? You guys are going to get to test out whether money is going to help you or you, Ian, you you Einstein people that you think you're just so smart, man. You smart, all you smarty pants out there, right? You're going to get the chance to see if you being smart, oh, I know a stat for this, oh, I know a stat for that. Well, technically, it's actually this let the A silent. Oh, actually, it's not pronounced that way. The B silent, all you kind of people that, that you just know so much, man. We're going to get to test to see if your smarts gets you out of that. 
And you're going to find that no it don't. It's only going to be belief in Yahweh. And belief in Yahweh Shai. That's going to get a person out of that time. And that belief in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Is going to cause for these people to not take that thing that everyone else in the world. Is going to feel comfortable taking and comfortable doing for the most part man. They're going to be prepared to not do it. Even if it means getting beheaded man. Can elk, can any of these other people on this earth say that? Verse 32 And the time shall be when all these things shall come to pass, and the sign shall happen <coughs> which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. So World War Three brings the Lord, man. Now somebody might say, That don't say that. Well, you don't have to believe it. Don't believe it then, man. Find something else. Go watch somebody else, man. Go go listen to one of these Christians. Just tell you about the third, the third tribulation or whatever the hell madness they're talking about, man. It's going to be three and a half years here and three and a half years there, and we're all going to be saved, Jew and Gentile. Go go follow one of them, and and eat pork and all that, and just have them tell you that the Lord's done away with. Just have them lie to you. Go follow one of them, man. Go follow what follow them that tell you that being an Israelite don't matter. But everywhere that it speaks about Israel in the New Testament, they're going to say that that's spiritual Israel. So I guess being an Israel matters them. Because if it didn't, you don't have to even you wouldn't have to even be spiritually, would you? According to what they're saying, which that's not spiritually talking about Israel when it says that Israel in the New Testament is literal. It's literal. Verse 33, and when all people shall and when all people shall hear his voice, which lets you know that people are gonna actually see him, man. When all people shall hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So Yahweh Shai is gonna garnish, he's gonna well not garnish, that's probably not the right word. He's gonna gain the attention of everyone on the earth, man. His presence is not gonna be able to be ignored. Even though these people are going to have bigger things on their hands, all the people are going to forget all the battles. It's, let, let me read it again. And when all people shall hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So that's going to be everyone. All the civil war is going to stop. Right? All the world war is going to stop. Yahweh Shai is going to gain the attention of the whole world. And that's why it says in the scriptures, every eye shall see him, man. The, the attention of everyone in the world is going to stop from what the little grievances they have with each other. All big grievances, all massive grievances, man. And it's going to come to where they're like, well, man, what the hell is this? And the elect of the nation of Israel, they're going to know exactly what it is. But then all these other fake people that have got their fake religions, they're going to be making stuff up on the spot. Some of them are going to say, oh, that's the Dajjal we was talking about. That's the Dajjal we were saying. And they're going to be trying to lie initially, man. Some of them are going to be saying, oh, it's a hologram. That ain't real. Some are going to be saying, oh, I don't know what that is. They're going to just have to admit and tell the truth, man. But eventually, shortly after, they're going to know exactly what it, what it is and what it was, man, and who it is. They're going to know. People are going to be having heart attacks at the Lord's presence. All kind of things are going to be going on, man. And you lying Christians, man, you Volcab Malone people and you Volcab Malone followers and descendants, disciples and all that. What are you going to be saying in that time, man? What are you people going to be saying in that time? You people that have just been so desperate trying to prove that we ain't Israelites, but ain't been going into nothing else in the Bible. Like you, all the things that you've heard about in the Bible pretty much now have stopped all the things you used to go into. And you're just so focused on whether we're Israelites or not. Do you think that that's a bit creepy? Verse 33 again, and when all people shall hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they had one against another. Right? And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and overcome him by fighting. So they're going to come and try and fight the Lord, man. That's what they're going to have the nerve in their mind to try and do. And let me get a scripture in, in the New Testament to show that it speaks about the same things in the New Testament, man. Speaks about people coming and hearing his voice. 
First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall remain and be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So they shall ever be with the Lord. And that's because at the time when Yahweh Shai decides to show it, well, at the time when Yahweh sends Yahweh Shai to show himself to the world, which in him doing that, he's going to prove his own existence as well and prove that he's a God that hides himself, right? That's going to be because there's people in America, right? The land of the North. And there's people in other places that he don't want to get destroyed. But America in particular is that main place. And that's why that's the place that's mentioned in that particular prophecy in Jeremiah 23. And in Jeremiah 16 where it speaks about the land of the north. And then it goes on to say, and everywhere else that they're scattered. But the land of the north or, or America, North America, Babylon the Great. That's the main place that the salvation is coming from. That's the main location. Right, because that place ain't gonna need nobody. It, it, that place ain't gonna be a place no more after that. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah, it's not gonna exist anymore, man. It's not gonna exist. And um, let me get um one more scripture, man. Going into how Yahweh's gonna turn the captivity of the children of Israel, but these people don't want to believe that. But he's turning it anyway. He's already turning it. And you, the people of this earth's pride is going to be greatly decreased, man. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in mine anger. Which is, that's the reason why we're in this situation. The reason why a certain Israelite might not have um, the kind of respect he wants on the earth is because of a spiritual reason. The reason why a brother might have certain financial money that he wants and he's kind of in a comfortable position but he's damn near hardly ever got any free time to even sit and think about anything. That's because of a spiritual situation too. The reason why a brother might have bad health, that's because of a spiritual situation. The reason why a brother has got pain, might have pain in his joints and it's just there, but it only started happening when he started calling upon the Lord's name. It never happened before that. That's because of a spiritual situation. The reason, reason why brothers are going bold Right, that's because of a spiritual situation, man. The reason why brothers are battling against spiritual warfare, that's because of a spiritual situation. The bad things that have happened in their life, that's because of Yahweh driving driving us away in His anger, man. The reason why some some of us are in one country and some of us are in another, but none of us, as people that believe in the Lord, like how we do, have one headquarters or one country. That we can say is our home country. That don't exist right now. To where we can actually go there. It's there. There's not a place that's built up. So that all the people that believe in Yahweh. Can go there right now. There's a there's a land that belongs to us. But we can't. If we, we can't go there right now. Because we got kicked out of there. Long ago. And fakes. Have tried to come and say that they, that they went back. And that they us. But they're lying. And that's why look at what's happening in the land. They don't it don't match prophecy. It don't match the prophecies that they say that they fulfilled already. Verse 37 Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven in my anger and my fury and in my fury and in great wrath, and I'll bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way, which is going into the new covenant, that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Right. That's what Yahweh is getting ready to do, man. Verse 42. For thus saith Yahweh. In fact, let me go verse 41. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, to do them good, and I'll plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart, with my whole soul. Those people in the land of Israel can't say that they're planted there assuredly. They're having to dodge drones, man. 
that's not assuredly, is it? That's not yeah, how we're doing it with his whole heart and his whole soul. Because if it was, you wouldn't be having to dodge drone attacks, would you? So that damn sure ain't talking about them. But the world would rather believe that Ezekiel 36 has been fulfilled and, and somehow this all of this stuff is still happening than believe that we're the children of Israel. Because that means that there's a whole lot of ass whooping that comes with us being the children of Israel that they don't want to go through, man. There's a whole lot of judgment that comes with us being the children of Israel that they don't want to accept that they're going to have to go through, but they're going to have to go through it, man, whether they like it or not. They will have to go through it. Verse 42. For thus saith Yahweh, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, because the reason why we're in the situation we're in is because of Yahweh. Simple as that. If a brother is not as tall as he wants to be, it's because of Yahweh. If we're cursed, if our, anything that bad is happening in our lives, man, no matter how much skill it might seem we've got to actually make the thing come to pass, it's because of Yahweh why it's not happening. Because Yahweh, like it says in Haggai 1 and 3 to verse 9, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways. Right? And goes into saying how you've eat, you, you eat a lot. But you ain't full, you drink a lot, but you ain't filled with drink. You've got clothes, but yet you ain't warm. Right? And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Meaning that your life, even though it seems like it should be alright, is still trash. It's still trash. Right? Verse 40, and I will make an everlasting... No, verse 43, I mean. No, verse 42. For thus saith you, how I like as I have brought all this great evil upon these people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Because he's going to turn the captivity of the children of Israel, man, and he's doing it already. He's gradually doing it, man. He's gradually doing it. Just like in ancient Egypt, Yahweh didn't just send the 10th plague and make the firstborn die. He gradually smote the place with plagues and, and took their strength away little by little, man. And that's the same thing that he's doing to America. And that's the same thing that he's doing to the mother of America, the UK. And to all of their allies, man. I'm going to end the lesson there. Shalom to the nation of Israel. Shalom.